The Terminator unit known as the T-800 was the most powerful killing machine created by Skynet. It contains detailed files on the human anatomy and physiology so it can become a more efficient killer. Its neural net processor CPU allows it to learn, improvise, and it's updated with additional data files and advanced infiltration techniques, basic training for soldiers, sniper training, extensive tactical database, including detailed files on other Terminators and emergency medical training so it can repair itself to continue its mission objective. It is almost an impossible job when it comes to taking down a T-800, but to capture it and reprogram it would be just as excruciatingly difficult as it is to eliminate it. And in the comic book story known as Terminator 3 Before the Rise, we see the process it took to reprogram a T-800 in the third Terminator film that protected John Connor and Catherine Brewster. In the future, a group of soldiers from the Resistance had a new mission to capture one of Skynet's T-800 Terminators. Three units from the Resistance are posted in separate nearby locations, each dealing with a T-800 in hopes of capturing it themselves. By the end, only a small group of soldiers remained, but they managed to capture a T-800 after having one of the soldiers being chased down by it. She jumped from a very high distance, and the impact ended up knocking her out cold. The Terminator was temporarily knocked out from the impact, and it gave one of the soldiers a chance to bolt it to the ground from one of its legs, but it quickly reacted with a fierce punch possibly killing it. However, their trap was already set in motion, and they used a magnetic attachment crane to immobilize it completely. They shut it down and commenced with their next step to reprogram it. It took many lives from the Resistance to capture a T-800 model, and it brought further pain to a soldier known as Jonah, whom's wife ended up being bait to capture the Terminator. The fall had left her bedridden while the others worked on reprogramming the Terminator that put her in that state. This would infuriate Jonah, especially since they had to repair it, make adjustments and treat it like their ally after it just killed many of their comrades. Even after turning its systems back on, it immediately grabbed onto the nearest person by the throat and began crushing it as the others tried shutting it down again. In order to ensure it would not break through its restraints, they removed its limbs, most of its hardware, and used further methods to restrain it. After getting inside its head, they used visuals of the past with a young John Connor to explain to the T-800 how their present has become a nightmare, thanks to the machines that made him. But now, he alone can change everything if he sides with humanity. Of course, the T-800 resists, and it even attempts to kill young John Connor. But he continues to explain that he must fight his old objectives. He must fight against the machines that made him, as they will not hesitate to eliminate him. As they continue clearing his internal memory containing every motive to kill mankind, Captain Anne feels that they're wasting their time. That killing machine is resisting to fight back against any of the Terminators they've included in the illusion it's facing. She leaves the room and commands a robot helper to locate Jonah for her. They need to talk. He was out on his own drinking his sorrow away as he felt his life was meaningless without his wife if she does not wake up. Captain Anne eventually found him and was upset to see that he was neglecting his task and feeling sorry for himself. But he argues that it's not easy seeing his wife fighting for her life on that bed while the Terminator that put her in that state gets a tune-up. She leaves the area to check up on his wife's condition, and as she does so, the T-800 observes and asks, Why do you watch over the damaged one? She replies, I'm not here to talk, and shuts it down. You are not what you used to be. Do you understand? Says young John Connor. The T-800 replies, I am unclear. I am a Terminator. John's response is, That's part of it. Come and listen, 
You've got a lot to take in. Don't step on that. This is the old world. Your goal here was to kill. This world is older still, but for you, it's all the future. Everything was... Don't kill anyone. He responds, I was not online during this period. I've never seen it. There are humans everywhere. They're alive, walking. The sky does not display familiar characteristics. It is more uniform in texture. John tells him, that's the lack of nuclear fallout. Makes for a better lazy Sunday. What's a lazy Sunday, he asks. Just one of a million phrases that went away when your kind came calling. Replaced with words like cyborg and hunter killer. The T-800 points at bystanders and asks, You want to give me a new mission? Who do you want me to terminate? And John replies, No, you got the wrong idea. You'll be here to save lives. Won't be easy. There's a lot stacked up against you. More than any human can handle. You may be built to last, but so is the world. So is your opposition. You're a real bad boy, but you're not top of the line. You'll be ending program. The system is halted as Jonah tells the man working on the program to hurry and get the medic because his wife needs immediate attention. It appears that her heart has stopped beating and the T-800 observes everything going on. Even when it comes to mourning for the loss of another troop, the machines take their shots as soon as they detected humans nearby. They send in aerial attacks, killing more soldiers and Jonah jumps into the water where the endless corpses lie, now including his wife. For a moment, he's accepting to die by her side. But Captain Ann pulls him back into the boat, and she continues to fire directly at the HK aerials and drones. But their boat's motor gets shot causing it to explode, which kills another soldier and sends the rest of them flying into the water. They get back on land and proceed to fight back, but since they only have one weapon, the soldier with them takes the weapon and tells them to run back to their base while he distracts them. They are the only ones left that can fulfill John Connor's plan. He draws fire as they make a run for it. As soon as they arrive at their base, they get started on putting their Terminator back in one piece. They take no breaks waste no time, and prepare for the biggest gamble of their lives, taking this monster and turning it into a hero for the past to save their future. Once it's finally complete, they make sure that everything is correct since a single mess up can create an even bigger problem for the past. Suddenly, one of their comrades enters the room in critical condition and warns them that the perimeter has been breached, and he is then finished off by an HK drone which flies into the room and rapidly starts firing across the entire room. Leaving it in complete disarray, Jonah and the other soldier hide under the bed. Captain Ann hides as well, but the room is being completely destroyed, and even their assistant robot shows up to remove the HK drone, but its efforts become meaningless as it too gets destroyed by the HK's firepower. A Terminator approaches the bed, and it's their new reprogrammed ally who comes to their aid and fights off the HK drone. He grabs onto it as it flies out of the base. He punches through it and disables its power source, shutting it down but making the two of them come crashing down, creating a wide explosion, but taking down both machines. The Terminator wakes up after some time passes, as they try bringing it back to life, and in its viewpoint, we see that the three of them did survive that attack, and they discuss the situation. Captain Ann tells them to shut it down. It's over. It cannot be saved. The soldier that worked on reprogramming it tells Ann that they can't dispose of it after everything they went through, but most importantly, it did save their lives. But she informs him that it's pointless. Besides, Unit 6 has the new T-800 on its way. After saying this, they shut it down permanently. But as they come to this conclusion, you can see the expression in Jonah's face. He lost his wife to a Terminator that would not even become the savior of humanity as it would get destroyed before being sent to the past. In the end, 
It may not have been the same T-800 that was sent from the future in the third film, but it proved that they could reprogram it to help humanity. And that's how the T-800 unit in Terminator 3 was reprogrammed to protect John Connor and Catherine Brewster, and give humanity a chance to defeat Skynet. As you can see, this was an impressive story describing how the T-800 was reprogrammed to help humanity like the same model from Terminator 2 Judgment Day. The method they used to reprogram the Terminator reminded me a lot of the Matrix film where Morpheus shows Neo the real world they live in and how it came to be. The only thing I would change about the story is that it should take place in between parts 1 and 2 instead of being a prequel to Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines. I know this is meant to promote the movie and give you reasons to watch it and make it connect with the new Terminator movie. We all know that Terminator 2 prevented the war with Skynet, so it wouldn't make sense for John Connor and the Resistance to try the exact same thing they did in Terminator 2 and expect different results. So I think it would have made a lot more sense to make this story connect with Terminator 2 and say that this was what it took to reprogram the T-800 to protect John Connor and prevent Judgment Day and save humanity. Hello stranger, welcome to the Storpian. We've got the iconic grin as well as the new lime green logo in store, for you. And for a limited time, you can purchase the Yuri vs. Joe knockout item. It's available as a t-shirt including stickers, all for a very low price. This one's based on the Resident Evil 3 mobile game called Resident Evil The Missions. And this one I like to call the Jill Manwich. It's my blend of the two things I love in this world, Jill and memes. And don't worry about the prices, they're as low as they can be. Yep, I'm barely making any profit. But, but, the important thing is that you don't need to spend too much to look good in the groovy lime green logo. So get yourself a Jill Manwich t-shirt or any of these luxurious and spunky designs. And wear them with pride. Yeah, wear them with pride. <laughs> Trust me. Anyone sees you wearing one of these and they'll immediately think Which translates to This guy This is my kind of guy Now over at my Patreon I'm working on some secret projects So if you'd like to have access to some of these never before seen videos Including updates and concept art from a comic book I'm working on Based on Resident Evil Outbreak Then my Patreon's got you covered I'll be updating everyone there with exclusive videos and newer art panels so you can see how far that project progresses over time. It's going to be the first comic book I create and I'm putting as much effort as I can into it. So I do feel confident about that project alone. You might also be glad to know that I've started narrating the S.D. Perry novel of Resident Evil The Umbrella Conspiracy as part of the patron exclusives and there will be a new video based on each chapter every week. So don't miss out on any of these, my fellow jabronis. That's it for the video. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button to give this video a chance to grow. I'd like to thank all my Patreon supporters for their impeccable generosity. Your support means a lot to me and you are part of the reason why I try to make the best content that I can. And if you like this content, check out the rest of my channel. You'll find more entertainment from separate franchises I like to cover such as Mortal Kombat, Dragon Ball Z, Celebrity Deathmatch, Men in Black, The Mask, Batman Comics, The Terminator, TMNT, Dino Crisis, Resident Evil, and more. If you're a Patreon supporter, check out my exclusive videos such as the Gantz content. And if you'd like to show your support, go to my Patreon and support the channel, which is only a dollar. Sacrifice that McChicken for extra quality content, my friend. But anyways, I'll see you on the next video, and remember to have an awesome day.